Today we'll celebrate the optional memorial of St. Adelbert, uh, bishop and martyr. We had two choices, St. Adel Adelbert or St. George, and you have to pick one or the other, and I was pastor of St. Adelbert, so I picked Adelbert's. And I'll say some words about St. Adelbert at the homily. Perpetual light will shine on your saints, O Lord, and life without end forever. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who bestowed the crown of martyrdom on the Bishop St. Adelbert, as he burned with zeal for souls, grant, we pray, by his prayers, that the, obe the obedience of the flock may never fail the shepherds, nor the care of the shepherds be ever lacking to the flock. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to the way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard the voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, Who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they had heard the voice but could not see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, Here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight, and ask at the house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying. And the vision he had seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him that he might regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man 
and he, here he has authority from the chief priest to imprison all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, Go for this man is a cho- go for this man is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, kings, and children of Israel, and I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized, and when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to the world to tell the good news. For steadfast is his kindness toward us, and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him, says the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors who ate and still died, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. The Gospel of the Lord. So in our first reading, there's a couple things to note that are worthy of our meditation and explain some of the church's teaching. One is that Jesus identifies with the church. You know, sometimes people try to split the church and Jesus because they don't want to obey the church and think the teachings are wrong for one reason or another. But Jesus identifies with the church. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Well, Saul's persecuting the church. He's, he's persecuting the early apostles that Jesus established in the early church. 
that Jesus clearly set up and uh, structured. So Jesus identifies with the church. That's not something the church made up when we talk about being his body. Uh, Jesus is the one who made that happen. And the second is you see this conversion of St. Paul that's pretty radical and a change, a, a huge change. He's going in one direction. The Lord knocks him down and sends him in the correct direction. That conversion, because it's so dramatic, we use that to name other conversion. It's a Pauline conversion. When you talk about somebody having a Pauline conversion, that means uh, spiritually they've been sort of knocked down and they've come to the light. They've realized who Jesus is. And it's, it's necessary for people who've never heard the gospel, they have to hear it for the first time, or people who've fallen away uh, from the gospel you know, Catholics who've fallen away. They need to have a Pauline experience of God. So, uh, and the gospel needs to penetrate and uh, pierce their hearts so that they decide to uh, live for the Lord. The, the complement to the Pauline conversion is what we would call a Petrine conversion. Uh, Peter, because Peter represents the church. And so the idea there is that, and it is the ideal, that somebody actually uh, is raised in a Catholic household and from day one uh, experiences the Lord in the household and talk about him and age appropriately as you grow, you grow in love and knowledge of the Lord. And uh, there never has to be, if you will, this Pauline conversion because you've been raised in the faith and your heart's been softened to the gospel and you've lived the power of the Holy Spirit ever since the Holy Spirit was poured out into you at your baptism. You've been educated and taught the faith. That's the ideal, and what we want to rebuild a family Catholic culture that can withstand what's out there nowadays that seeps into homes and prevents that, that regular church upbringing. You know, the home's no longer a domestic church so often today because it's ruled by the darkness of the world that's pumped in through the media and you know school environments etc uh, we want to rebuild family catholic culture that can withstand all of that so we don't need in catholic families we don't need pauline conversions because everyone's raised to be uh, catholic from day one and they're they're developed in the faith in a beautiful way to live the power of the holy spirit their whole life St. Adelbert was born in 956 in the family's castle in Libice, Bohemia. L-I-B-I-C-E. I don't really know how to pronounce it. Libice, I think. That's today part of the Czech Republic. So the year 956, he's born. His family belonged to the princely Slavnik line. His early education was under the supervision of another Adelbert who became a saint and he was the bishop of the Archbishop of Magdeburg, this other Adelbert. And when uh, Saint Adelbert was confirmed, he was given the name of Adelbert. His, his, uh, his birth name was Wojciech, Wojciech. So he, he was named after this Archbishop Adelbert uh, at his confirmation. On his return to Prague, Adelbert was ordained to the priesthood, and then the first bishop of Prague died. Adelbert, although he was only 26 years of age, was chosen to succeed him. In his personal life, he was austere and mortified. He practiced mortifications. As shepherd of the diocese, he sought to spread the Christian faith throughout his territory. To accomplish this, he extirpated whatever pagan customs remained among his people. He, he got rid of them. He strove to raise their moral standards and initiated reform among the clergy, which seems to always need to be done in the history of the church. These measures, however, aroused the enmity, the anger of some, including Boleslas II, who is Duke of Bohemia, who forced Adelbert to leave the diocese. He subsequently went to Rome, where he entered the Benedictine Abbey 
of Saints Boniface and Alexis. He returned to Prague in 993, three years later. But realizing he was still unwelcome in his diocese, he, be, he again left for Rome, and then he, he was elected prior of that abbey where he was staying. Being aware that he could never return to his see, he requested Pope John the 15th for permission to be released from his Episcopal duties and he asked to be appointed as an itinerant missionary going around and preaching. At the invitation of Duke, Bo Duke Boleslas uh, Chrobry of Poland, Adelbert settled in that land and began evangelizing non-Christians. So he's, he's actually seen as the father of Polish Catholicism. In 996, he took his mission to the non-Christian Prussian peoples on the Baltic coast. He traveled as far as Gdansk, but there he encountered great opposition because he refused to give up his evangelizing mission. He was determined he's going to evangelize. He was martyred on April 23, 997, and his body was first buried at Gniezno, Poland, and then it was transferred decades later to Prague. The power of St. Adelbert to live heroic virtue came from the Eucharist. With great trust in our Lord's goodness, we bring to him our needs. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the clergy, that the Lord richly bless them in their dedication to the church and to the preaching of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. For government leaders across the world, that God multiply their efforts to end wars and work toward world peace, we pray to the Lord. For those living with chronic illness, that the Lord grant them consolation in their suffering and patient hope for healing, we pray to the Lord. For our faith community, that the Holy Spirit help us to grow in our reflection of God's mercy to one another, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died in Christ, nourished by true bread in this life, including our Mass intention today and all of our family members and friends who have died before us, that they know eternal happiness in the next life. We pray to the Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you for hearing our petitions. We ask that you use these prayers joined to the sacred heart of your Son in this Eucharist to accomplish your glory. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. For through your goodness, we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise which we offer to your majesty in commemoration of the blessed martyr Adalbert that it may lead us to obtain pardon and confirm us in perpetual thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Alleluia.
Let us pray. We have received your heavenly gifts, rejoicing at this feast day, O Lord. Grant, we pray, that we who in this divine banquet proclaim the death of your Son may merit to be partakers with the holy martyrs in his resurrection and his glory, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Saint Joseph, protector of holy church and terror of demons. <laughs> 